In a world of goblins, monsters, and demons, many questions are asked, but few are answered. But when a group of heroes rises up to answer the call of adventure, they'll find themselves asking and answering the same question again and again. Are we dead yet? What's the play? As far as I know, Huda is still pantomiming. Yes, (laughs) Huda is still pantomiming. Uh, Yeah, Zinfer actually wasn't even. Do I run past the queen, or am I going? Zinfer's off to the side, hanging out with a bunch of the lizard folk, like joking with them, and everyone's laughing, even though no one speaks each other's language. (laughs) (laughs) I'll give you that. So you're still not paying attention. Perfect. So it is just you two is really giving yeah. a shit here. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? Do we go after him? I mean, we definitely can. We might as well see what happened. Yeah, what yeah. I mean, do you think we should? I mean, it's either talk to the queen or go help Father Crow. We'll help Father Crow. Uh, we're going to go help Father Crow. He seems to be in a little <laughs> bit of distress. Yeah, let's Hallucinating. Go see we're going to we're gonna go take care of him. And we're going to turn around and dip. Start. Okay. Yeah. What is you guys still staying? You just you just seen these. Do two. I do I still have an audience? Not really. Everyone's starting to come to realize the queen's marching in here with guards. Oh, I'm going we to. We should uh, grab Zinfra. We should just make a run for. Notice it. the queen walking in and wave. Oh, hello. <laughs> okay. Oh, and as Fine. we are leaving the room, I'm yelling, "We're not gonna go make out again." <laughs> So, oh. Zipfer, several guards grab you by the arms. I say several because you're much larger. <laughs> yeah. So, it takes a few of them, and they drag you out to the floor where Gouda is. And the queen and uh, several of the guards are surrounding you as she approaches you and very angrily asks you where the Zahagen went. Uh, the what? Oh, wait, what's this? Zahagen? Our prisoner is missing. And your friends are in an awful hurry. Oh, that's suspicious. <laughs> that's that's one way of putting it. But I hope you realize that's also you too, Sherman. You are going. I, mean, to I can leave. actually explain myself, though. You are going to leave, or are you going to be good, become tomorrow's dinner. Ah, uh, fair. Ah, uh, thank you for your generosity, and I'm going to hand her an acorn. Oh my god. <laughs> The guards march you out. Okay. You all, all are standing outside the lizard folk lair, and several of them have poured to the entrance, and they are all standing at attention. Um. So I want to say, as I've reached the entrance, probably like before the guard or whatever, yeah, I everyone. stop, and I'm like looking at the spot where I was laying, and I can see the blood spot, and I'm like horrified. Okay. Um, and in that pause, as everyone gathers behind me, uh, I definitely want to turn around and start trying to explain the situation, especially like gashes. To who? Lizard folk? Lizard folk. None of them speak common, yo. You kind of already learned this. I speak some lizard folk now. Okay, you're going to yell the words Zahagen and go? And be like, scratches, I tried to stop, which in directions I can be like, stop scratch try uh he run (laughs) i die (laughs) (laughs) you came in with them you left with them no i'm you know what lizard folk are they're gonna see you as part of the problem but yes you do come uh all of you come out to a bird pantomiming his death and yelling random lizard folk (laughs) Do you think he's high still, you guys? I think he's hot boxed. Yeah. Do you think he's high? All I know is I did that better. <laughs> yeah. I was Gouda, just, just going to say, you definitely Gouda did, did it better. better. Yeah, there's a lot of guard. You guys are standing in the edge of the cavern here. And it is nighttime. <laughs> Evicted at night. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. I mean, I'd rather be evicted at night. <laughs> than killed? 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, seeing as how my follow-up uh, is ill-received. It's not received. Okay. <laughs> I pass along, since I know courtesies, my deepest apologies. Okay. And sadness in my failure. Okay. And then I turn and start, like, head down, start following the river down. You're just going to start walking? Without us? I, I need medical attention. Okay. <laughs> I mean, where's we got the medic. We're still all for, like, wait, so the, where, where's he, where's, where's he going? Where's Father Crow going? Father Crow, wait for us. We'll, we can take you to town. That is where I need to go. Then we'll take you there. Just hold up for a minute, buddy. It's going to be okay. No, we didn't. They're not going to kill the town. Everyone's happy. They're not going to kill us. <laughs> They're not going to kill us. <laughs> That's a miracle. Yeah. I mean, well, they wouldn't have a reason to kill us. Not oh. at all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, they had a good time. We showed them a party, right? Yeah, we, That's we, we, we hotboxed their banquet hall. Um, Damien got made out with. You got made out with. Hey. <laughs> Gouda put on a great show. I mean, I haven't seen a performance like that since, oh, my nights in Neverwinter. Yeah, since, you know, high school and, you know, little bird town. Oh, maybe when I finally make it to a big city, I'll be a performer. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I think, I think that'd be great. I'll be your backup musician. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I call it a good day, you guys. Yeah. And I guess, I'm, like scarred over with yeah great day <laughs> I got plenty of spell slots left I can heal you more so okay. I guess we're gonna start walking so towards you're, town you're, well yeah I was gonna say you start walking or are you gonna keep you know holding hands singing kumbaya with each other well, I was gonna say what else are we gonna do they're mind. literally like get the fuck out of here okay I, just... I think we should walk a ways away and then set up a camp have a nice long rest wake up tomorrow and head back to town fresh maybe, yeah. maybe we could camp where we lost your anchor yeah, that's actually where we in. first got ambushed. No, let's maybe do it hidden. We'll have a camp hidden, maybe. Well, they won't ambush us now that they know that we're not. Yeah. Yeah, we should be fine now. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And if not, it's going to be another fun night. <laughs> <laughs> I might lose my other arm. So you guys want to set up camp? Yeah. You yeah. want it to be hidden or you don't care? Hidden. Hidden? Mm-hmm. Okay, we're not hidden. I don't think it matters. Okay. 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 So you set up camp, and uh, how far out do you go? You said you go to the last spot you camped at, or? Well, I was thinking. Uh, my only idea was where, where where my anchor was, where his anchor was, because that was kind of a high point, and we yeah, could see the lair. The last time you camped, right? Yeah. 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 Well, no, because oh, okay. we had we hadn't camped there. Okay. That's where we got ambushed. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, that's fine. You guys march your way up to the top of that hill there, and you set up camp for the night. To to feel better, Father Crow. Uh, uses his last spell slot to levitate himself so he can fly and then he lands into a tree and just like sad bird sad bird emo mm. bird <laughs> okay he's got to reflect on his near death experience or his death experience yeah and the whole he did address multiple times at the mentions of demon baby that demons were a problem and now he has had a very, very personal encounter with Demon. You were only mostly dead. You're fine. So you guys march your way to the top of the hill there. And as you uh, get to the clearing where you were last apprehended, you all glance up to find Father Crow resting in his tree, looking all sad boy-like. Uh, and you set up camp. What do you camp in? What Do you, do you sleep in trees? I mean, I can I'm asking, I'm not, like... I was just going to perch up in the tree, like, relax. How people sleep in trees sometimes. So that's how you sleep? I will sleep. Okay. How do people sleep in trees? You've never seen a movie where people fell asleep in a tree? <laughs> that's a movie. Yeah, that's a movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's what, what is happens D- in real life nods off ground. Yeah. <laughs> this is D&D, though. Yeah. That, no, that's fair. Uh, fine, you want to sleep in a tree, you sleep in a tree. And you guys set up camp. Yeah. Uh, who's taking watches for me? I'll take Gouda? a watch. Which one do you want? Um, either one. First I'll, works for me. I'll take f- second. There we go. You know what? I'm going to take that back. It's late in the night. I only need one watch. Oh, okay. Gouda it is. Sounds good. Uh, 21. 21? Yeah. 
It's a clear night, beautiful sky, even through the trees. Fairly quiet, minus the normal nature sounds. Now that you are privy to their sounds, their patterns, and their tracks, uh, you pick up several guard patrols roaming just outside your camp perimeter. Um, they're definitely keeping an eye on you. But Gouda's all gonna, of, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say Gouda's gonna kick back and smoke another uh, Zen for Spliff. Mm. <laughs> yeah, other than that, you have a pretty damn good night, I guess. Yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, Gouda. Uh, and yeah, you watch away until the uh, sun comes up. You have a nice, easy night. No problems. You clean up and you march on. Gouda's gonna take about an hour in the morning to uh, make an offering at a tree. Okay. And it's going to be a larger offering than normal. Okay. Because he hasn't done this in a while. Sure. And then he's going to take a quick bath in the stream because he's covered head to toe in alligator. Sure. Crocodile. <laughs> Crocagator. Crocagator. Ooh, you're probably a little smelly. Oh, I'm probably really smelly. That's why I'm bathing right now. Anyone doing anything special? Uh, water's probably not deep enough to swim. Do you want to swim in what he just left in there? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> Not really, no. Uh, okay, so bathing, no swimming. Uh, if we're hanging out for a little while, Zinfer's going to uh, look around you know, in a tight perimeter or tight area of the campsite to try and replenish his supply a bit. Supply? Oh, supply. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, I guess we'll give back the the half of the quarter so the eighth of a pound that we didn't need that's right he didn't need all of it um oh lyra will pull damien aside and be like i can't believe that actually kind of worked hey i'm a little surprised but i mean hey i'm a little sad at the lack of guilt that you guys are feeling i mean no one no one else has to hear about this no one died yeah no one died <laughs> wow zimfer you're wandering through the trees here. You're uh, kind of stocking up on random things, you know, for remedies, for, you know, personal use, mm-hmm. for eating. The wind kind of picks up. And uh, you hear kind of a whisper. And it's just kind of, it sounds like it's calling out to you. And it's kind of beckoning you to go deeper into the forest. I I should still be close by to the campsite. Yeah, you're not that far out. So I'm going to call out mm-hmm. and say, Oi, I hear something. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. And I'm going to follow it. Perfect. So at least they know I'm going. Did did he just disappear into the forest saying he heard something? I think so. Should we someone follow after him maybe? Uh, we'll give him a few. Maybe it's like a Maybe it's like a druid thing. Too many oh, drugs. yeah, maybe. He has to be <laughs> one with nature, maybe, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Zinfer probably totally expects that they'd be able to find him by following his tracks because he's used to being with forest dwellers. So, yeah, that's just what you do. <laughs> yeah. So, be like, yeah, if they need me, they just track me. <laughs> At this point, uh, Gouda's going to return to the camp clean. Uh, he's got his clothes in a wet bundle, though, and he's going to hang them near his tent to dry out, and he's just butt ass naked. Zinfer. So you heed the call of the forest. Um, you wander further in, and as you do, the 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 call feels like a cry for help. It's kind of like it's not it's not so much that it's telling you to come in further. It's more that it's it's like it's begging you. It's reaching out to you. Um, as you're going further in, you see the decay of the forest that. Uh, that is starting to affect your homeland. Um, it seems to, as you go in, it's it's very rapidly changes um, from from green to almost black and dead. And you notice, as before, when the sunlight just kind of disappears all of a sudden, and you reach this one tree. Um, it just it it's rotting. There's holes. It's gross. There's there's insects and weird creatures inside of it. Um, the green, all the green on it is dead. Um, but it looks like it used to be like a grand tree, like the center of life in the forest here. It's it's trunk reaches so wide around. It would take you forever to 
get around it, right? Mm-hmm. The its branches look like they once kind of weaved throughout the rest of the forest here. All right. And uh you're kind of taking this in. And that's when you notice a small seed hanging off of one little branch at the top just over your head. Um by the way, how am I perceiving this cry? Is it like in uh, a language I can understand or just like with whi- It's like into a my whisper mind? in the wind. Alrighty. If it's what you would imagine talking to a tree is like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, how high up is this seat? Huh? How it's, high up is it? You're a tall dude. It's literally just above your head. All righty. Well, I'll reach up and take it. Yeah? Gingerly. Perfect. And, uh, is the seed corrupted or does it seem healthy? No, the seed is the only thing that seems to have life in this whole area. All righty. So, uh, yeah, he's going to reverently take the seed. Okay. And uh, say to the tree, because trees and plants can understand for a bulk for some reason. <laughs> I would say, um, what will I say? Yeah, well, I'm just going to assume everything's on the up and up and be like, I'll get this planted. I'll, go, I'll restore life to your, uh, to your forest. Or and something along that effect. And uh, take the seed, and there's nothing I can do for the tree immediately, right? Uh, I mean, I unless like, you have some special trick up your sleeve. I could, like, purify water. Oh, I can ritual cast detect poison and disease. Right at the gate, you recognize this as more of a magical thing than anything, and your yeah. encounter with the hag, you know, yeah. led you to believe that it was more them bestowing this on the force than anything. And you recognize this to be similar, so you know Mm -hmm. poison disease probably isn't going to do anything. Yeah. It's just magical evil corruption. Yeah. I'm not going to bother detecting magic. I'm going to get the message, take the seed, and uh, quickly return to camp before any hags show up. (laughs) And uh, let them know that uh, we're not quite safe here. Okay. Like, oh yeah. Well, we've got some bad news. There's a a lot of haggish corruption spreading not too far from here. Oh, that's pretty far. It it seemed like I didn't think it would spread that this far already. Right? Father I, Father Crow jumps down neither. from the tree. What is this about haggish haggish corruption? <laughs> haggis. Uh. Oh, yeah, because you don't know, like, anything about I what we've done. I don't know anything! <laughs> the forest I come from, way off to the southeast, is becoming corrupted by the dark magics of the hags and their coven. And uh, I just found evidence of it here. That is very sad. I don't know. Well, are there any... Is there any good news, maybe? <laughs> um, I've got a seed. Oh. From, from, a, tre- from a tree? From a tree? From a tree? You know, like a seed from a tree? Or like a seed of more of your your uh, special herbs and spices. Oh, nothing so mundane. A great tree, the very heart of the forest. It gave, entrusted me with the seed to carry on its its life force. Oh, that's so romantic. Yeah, it, it loves me. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have tree babies. <laughs> oh, the tree Are you like showing the seed as you're talking about it? Yeah. What does it look like? Ooh, what does it look like? Just a walnut. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like a big walnut, though, because it's from a big tree, right? So it's like a big walnut. It's a big magical. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Gouda is Gouda's like eyeing it. Interested <laughs> in the walnut. It. It's your baby. What are you gonna name them? Oh, we don't use we don't use names in the forest. You don't. No. But how'd you get your name? That's just what the the outer folk call me. We should name it. We could rename Zinfer. We could rename Zinfer because Zinfer technically doesn't have a name. I. That's always what I've been called. So I had told I'm just you taking guys to you could it. Rename the Herald too, and you never did. Well, um, should we maybe get back to town then and maybe focus on 
finding uh, something to stop the corruption then? I guess we gotta go fight those hags, you know. I love the forest. Next big plot you point. Know. I, this cannot be ignored. You know, This vamp- far away from the original nest. Uh, it's spreading far and fast. First, can we fix my arm? Oi, I, uh... <laughs> we will that's need, a good idea. We will need both of his arms. Uh-huh. I agree. So, head to town... Go back to the Hags Forest then? Something. You know, I haven't had very good fond memories of that forest. So. No, no. You know, getting eaten by a vampire almost. Not so great, you know. It's kind of, eh. You guys got attacked by a vampire? Yeah, we'll tell you the whole story <laughs> while we walk. going to just pull the head out of his pack? Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's nothing. That is amazing. I got some really cool clothes, though, from him. Uh, ha. Yeah. We do? Yeah. 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 yeah, we've got two heads. Oh. I can't remember which ones. All right, you carry the hag head, too. Yeah, I've got the hag head and the vampire head. Oh, fan- by the way, fan- fantastic clothes. Uh, I am in need. Mine are currently broken. Uh, I don't think they will fit you. I'm all, like, tall compared to you, right? Like, oh. Gouda's going to pull just a plain white okay. shirt and tan pants out of his pack and hand it to you. <laughs> oh. Oh, those are not good enough. Gouda's going to slowly and shadily put them back in his pack while not breaking eye contact. <laughs> Father Crow is 5'3", by the way. Oh. We yeah, we've established gonna... Damien's like six foot. Yeah, we ain't gonna fit. I mean, how <laughs> tall was the vampire? I mean, he's probably like 5'10". Uh, I don't the... know how tall a vampire is. No, but it was kind of established that the clothes fit like it, really closely. It also they fit good. I saw my belly. I'm not cape. expecting you to give me the clothes. I was just making a joke. <laughs> because of course, of course, a noble person would be like, "Oh, just give me your clothes." Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we eventually start packing up and heading out, I'll put my arm around Father Crow and just start explaining our our story. You're gonna give him the history. Yeah. <laughs> It all started. I'm sure it's going to be embellished group, and left out. The, like, you're probably going to leave out small details like yeah, you we're, guys causing the house fire. Yeah, no, they we're going to leave themselves. out the house fire one, maybe, and burning the ship down. So let's, let's just go with this. You're left with the impression that we're all heroic. Yep. And sometimes when we're around, fire spontaneously happens and it just can't be explained. Right? Exactly. What's that Maltov cocktail doing right there? I don't know. Maltov what? Maltov cocktail. Maltov what? I don't know what that is. Oh. We would have never <laughs> used something like that. Speaking of which, um, I kind of just made those out of a bunch of random alcohol barrels. Yeah. So we could just restock our supply by going to the inn and just get a bunch of ale, <laughs> make a bunch more Molotov. So are we heading out? Yep. Heading back to town. Cool. Father Crow keeps fiddling and his <clears throat> scars slash oh, missing feathers slash shirt. Are like? Yep. Aw. I'll give you a cape to like, I'll give you my bellowing cape, but you can only borrow it. I'll be like, this is to borrow, but let's just cover you. Let's keep you modest. <laughs> <laughs> This is very. He's still like you know the. Uh, he's using like mimicry sounds of still kind of sad people, but it's like this is really cool. Um, so you gave him the cape, mm-hmm. but you covered him up. So did you wrap it around? <laughs> but it just billows up. Hang on, so did you? Yeah, I yeah? guess I tried to. Like yeah. That? Okay, so let's. What's here's what's gonna happen because I think this is better. <laughs> um, is you put a cape of billowing on this bird guy. And you tried to wrap it around, and let's say we tied it so that you are actually like kind of wearing it as clothing, so you're not full nude. You know that picture of um, uh, what's her name, Marilyn Monroe, over the uh, the grate. (laughs) So Father Crow's whole trip looks like this. No, he's not. (laughs) He's not holding it down at all because it feels like the wind beneath his feathers. Oh, I get there. Like he's flying. He's embracing it. So he's embracing it. This is amazing. Not even working really. (laughs) (laughs) He's just a little. I would like to think he has pants on. He still has all of his clothes on. It's just tattered. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It just looks like shit. (laughs) Because, you know, a demon and a sahagan ripped into my chest. Did my pumpkin spice do anything besides just be pumpkin spice and stay hot all the time? Did it have any sort of... You would know, Josh. I know, and I can't remember. (laughs) I thought it was just pumpkin spice. I think it is just always hot pumpkin pumpkin spice. Always hot pumpkin spice. As far as you know. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to be drinking that while I'm telling the story of our adventures to him, and I'm going to every so often just offer him some. And Gouda's periodically drink interrupting 
saying that that's not how it happened, and then he describes it, and it sounds <laughs> way cooler when Gouda describes it. <laughs> <laughs> I want and, it to be and, like and also I, to be fair I'm not I'm not describing it accurately because just like how I misquote texts I misquote our adventures yeah so what <laughs> so you're left with is the impression that you are of our adventures true is and tried heroes who apparently are just surrounded by utter chaos <laughs> I can tell yeah but you're into I it because you too have encountered to my hero. chaos yeah, yeah. <laughs> and oh, you would have loved the Herald. Oh man, that guy, he just, you know, he could drink like nobody's business. <laughs> um, but, you know. Uh, so yeah, it's what, about two days more travel? It was a two day travel. Yeah, yeah. so it's two days travels uh, to get back into town here. Uh, over the course of it, you regale your new friend, Father Crow, here with all of your epic tales of adventure. And uh, you let him know exactly who you guys are, true heroes of uh, the Salt Marsh. Um. <laughs> and then we're going to get to town and they're not all going to be treated as yeah. such. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everyone scowling? <laughs> and it's early morning when you guys arrive back into town. And when you do, you're approached by the guard at the gate and they ask for you to report to the council on your uh, findings. Sure. Perfect. So you do just that. You guys go straight to the council area, right? Might Perfect. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you do that. The council gathers. And uh, as you walk into the room, you see um, the council on the other end here, all sat down in chairs and blah, blah, blah. Um, and you see, as you all enter, a tall Triton man Oh. exits. He's got a very serious look on his face. Is he fine? So, like, he walks past us. Yes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that Gouda does not know what the hell that guy is. That's fair. Is he fine? Zinfer doesn't, but he doesn't really care. Yeah, is he cute? Yeah, actually. According to this, like, uh, you know what a triton is? Nope. Cool. Like a merman? Like the Atlantis merman? They're more humanoid. Cool. Tradition. So, yeah, this one's, he's got, uh, he looks like a tried and true warrior. Very uh, broad, muscular. He's got the close-shaved head, chiseled jaw. His skin is like a bright blue with the very cheesy traditional chin scar uh, going across his face. (whistles) Yeah. And he exits as you all enter and you uh, stand before the council. And the old woman that you guys usually are, I forget her name right now. Oh, hello. Interacting with... I am Father Crow. Okay. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Is that so? Uh, with report to your find. Yes. I I regale an exact common speech as the lizard folk queen, the coming battle with the uh, Sahagin. And that she said explicitly, oh, yeah, we're having smugglers give us supplies so we can fight the the Sahagin. Like, pretty close to that. Yes. Yes. um, I see. We've heard a a similar story here. I'm sure you noticed our little friend uh, leaving. Yes, he looked rather upset. Yeah. What's his name? Yeah, what's his name, actually? Not important. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> oh. He gives us a quite similar story. Uh, coming war with the Sahagin, lizard folk uh, arming themselves up. A certain group causing problems. I wonder who that could be. Yeah. Hmm. Don't know about that. Uh, there is can, looming can... war, and you guys are creating chaos with our potential allies, creating even more th- threats. Hey, we didn't know they were going to be potential allies. Did you ask? No, but you didn't tell us, technically. You told us to assess whether they were a threat. We did that. (sighs) Father Crow is noticeably sad. I noticed that uh, the bar is set exceptionally low here. But, uh... (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Nevertheless, I suppose your job is complete. Here is your gold, as promised. How much? Uh, 1,000. All right. 
Adding 1,000 to the party treasury. Perfect. Very nice. How much are we at? 10,405. Ooh! <laughs> wow. And Vampire. You um, would get a share had you gotten the job. Oh, oh fuck you. <laughs> I, if I was there, I would have received. Hey, everyone oh. else played their role. I'm just kidding. Right. They hand you the gold. They insult you a little bit. And um, <laughs> despite your efforts to ruin potential alliances, we have nevertheless formed one with the Murd Folk Triton and lizard folk. So in the coming conflict, we will be looking to you for help. May the gods have mercy on us. Lathander will shine the way. Procan's always merciful. Thank you very much. Hmm. I'm waiting for the guard captain to be like, oh, great, more gods. <laughs> <laughs> Just then, the door slams open behind you. You hear commotion as a man comes barreling into the room, talking very loudly. Each of you turns around. Four of you turn around to see a familiar face. No. A man dressed in fine clothes, carrying a goblet of wine and some food in the other hand, smiles and laughs And uh, as he enters the chamber and takes note of you all. And then he is greeted by the main counselor. Ah! Gellard, welcome. You're uh, a little bit late. Gellard? Is it Ned? Let him finish. Yes. As he takes what you previously did not notice as the empty seat up on the council chair. Ah. Mr. Gellard, I would like to know where you purchased your fine clothes. It's that fucking bitch right there, (laughs) dude. (laughs) Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, I own a couple of the merchant shops in town, so they just, they make me what I want, you know? I, I, I yeah, th- you look like you need something. Why is your, why is your, is that a skirt? What's it doing? Ah, my friend, let me borrow a cloak. I was, I, I'd untie it and let it, like, my big scratches show. Yes, I was attacked violently by a demon and a sahagin. Right. Yeah, you should, you just, uh, you go visit a couple shops. Immediately. You, uh, yeah, and you just, you just tell them I sent you. We'll, uh, we'll get you hooked up here. How's about, how's that sound? It is most appreciated. Yeah, here, you want, you want a drink? You look like you could use a drink. Here's a drink. Absolutely. Yeah, take a sip. And, uh. Don't take a sip. Who are the, who are the rest of it's you fine, uh, fine people? Someone's gonna punch him. Someone punch him. He's punch up on the How council. many guards are there? Yeah, how many guards? Oh, no. How many guards are how there? How many guards are there? Thankfully, I got to talk first and make friends so that I am not included in the bullshit that is about to happen. Immediately, yes, five. But that's just in the room. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm uh, Gouda. Nice to meet you. Oh, uh, yeah, it's uh, nice to nice to meet you. What did uh, I'm sorry, I've been away a while. Uh, uh, nice uh, yeah. to meet you for the first time. Yeah. Uh, what are we What are we doing here? <laughs> Never met you before. Who, are, who? Right. Yeah, we got that. Okay. Yeah. Are you okay? Great. Are you? Ah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Living the life, man. Yeah, I just got I bet. back from a trip. Yeah, I was I bet. visiting the king, you know. Sure, sure. Delivering supplies for the front lines. Man, and man the, the life of a council yeah. member. Well, you know, I, I also, I know you don't know who I am, no. uh, but my family owns the most of the trade, trade, uh, trade goods and uh, shops around here. We do a lot of the, uh, yeah. So I. I'm just helping out, you know, donating a few supplies. Oh, that's fight the good fight, man. That's so nice of you, uh, man. I, wow, what a pillar of the community. Oh, just doing what I can. Hey, speaking of community, uh, I'm back in town, and I wanted to throw a big shindig for everybody. So, oh. um, you guys should. Uh, what? I'm sorry, we we really didn't touch on what they do. Why are they here? Who are you? Oh, we are here helping. Uh, with the Sahagan problem. Oh, sure. Um, well, whatever the case, uh, you guys live here. You're, you're all friends now. You should come to the shindig. I'm going to throw a big thing together. You know, feast. I'm going to get a couple of the breweries down. We'll get some, uh, some drink going. It'll be a good time. This is actually my first day. I would be honored to come. See, he's got the right idea. Jamie's just shaking his head. uh, It's agreed. We all did our thing here. What you want, Gouda? I'd like to size him up. (laughs) What's that mean? Like, 
is he physically fit? Does he look like uh, someone of of uh, the magical nature? Like, what 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 is this guy deal? And how uh, can I kick his ass? <laughs> I mean, you have <laughs> seen him naked. I have seen him naked. <laughs> Insight, investigation. Insight, and then investigate. Oh, nice. So we'll go 16 on insight okay. and a 21 for investigation. It's subtle, but your experience now, you can see it. You see the way he plays the fool. You see the way he has the town wrapped around his finger. You see the way he hides his physique, wearing slightly baggier, finer clothes. The way he intentionally slouches. You can tell every movement is on purpose. Every detail on point. This man is experienced at hiding who he is. Your final takeaway, Gouda? This man is dangerous. I just wrote, uh, don't fight Ned. He's stacked and hiding it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, Mr. Councilmember uh, Gellar? Oh, it's it's Gellard. Yeah. Gell- okay, sorry. Uh, my mistake. Uh, well, as, as you may not be aware, I just became the high priestess in- interim of the temple, and uh, I have a lot of work to do, so I'll, I'll have to pass on your your shindig but feel free to stop by sometime pay your respects to the gods uh, oh um, you uh oh what happened to uh oh what was his name the old guy welgar oh yeah that guy yeah uh he um he got killed <laughs> what a bummer <laughs> that's really sad yeah yeah it is well you know what we'll we'll have a drink to his his honor tonight oh we already had that covered but thanks <laughs> at this at the shindig i would love to uh talk shop uh, yeah, we don't we don't really do that while we party, my man. But oh, uh, I'll t- I'll be around maybe a little today. And like I said, you go to my shops, and uh, I promise I'll get you hooked up. All right, so I think that's uh, meeting adjourned, right? We all covered our bases. We're good to go. I got some things to do. I've been on a boat a long time. Uh, oh, I bet you have yeah. been on a boat for a really long time. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Jamie's just shaking his head. He's like, I'll be seeing you all soon. Yes, you will. For the second time. Mm. And uh, the council exits. Yeah, so that was Ned, right? Yeah, fuck that bitch. Yeah, yeah. I seem to like... I like him. No. You no. would. No. <laughs> Why do you hate so much? Um. Well, you remember when I was telling you the story of our, of our heroic adventures, uh, one of the first things that happened to us was some naked man decided to push us down into a hole and then drop a bomb on us. That and is a the very- ship- Key and then the piece ship. of information you did not tell me. I t- I totally would have told you that. Would I have? <laughs> I feel like it's part I feel of the like story. Ned was a pretty big part of the story, so yes, you would have mentioned Ned. You probably yeah. would have mentioned him like several times, like yeah. on the bow, how he showed up on I was the bow. Say, Lyra doesn't told shut up die. about Ned. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Lyra wants to like, murder him. He's the reason I keep remembering, because otherwise Ned probably would have just slipped off. Well, into now the Ned's void. gonna fucking die <laughs> at this party tonight. a little tonight. bit then in my response. Uh, Gellard is Ned? Yeah, yeah, same guy. In fact, I have this whole idea that when he dies, I'm going to cast this spell I know called Spare the Dying to resurrect him and then kill him again and then resurrect him again and just do that until I'm out of spell slots. (laughs) He's going down tonight. We're going to that shindig. That is quite dark. Well, my idea was I invited him to the temple. So, you know, I could... Oh, he did not seem like the type who would show up. I mean, probably not. He's... But think about it. We Maltol, we get some Maltol cocktails like we did last time on the ship and we just fucking bomb his house. What if we burn down his house? Exactly. And then he'll remember, right? Like what he did to us. And then as he watches his house Whoa. burn down, Oi, we can say, you guys cannot go around uh, burning things. I know fire is <laughs> let's kind of attached to your shindig, with but... the town. <laughs> hey, you're still in the council chambers and there are guards. We're whispering. Yeah. Right, they're... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Fine. She probably exit stage right. We're of course kidding. I'm only looking out for you guys. <laughs> We're of course kidding. We would never burn anything down ever. We have not burned down any houses within the city of Saltmarsh <laughs> or ships. <laughs> or ships. <laughs> Gouda's gonna go to uh, Zendra's shop. Yeah. 
Cool. So I'm, Gouda I'm just coming along. Exits, goes down to Zendros. You go with uh, Gouda to Zendros? Yep. Okay. I'll see a pretty lady. Let's go. Yeah, let's, all, to, yeah, let's all go. Everyone goes to see Zendros. All right. I like it. Everyone mobs on down to uh, everyone's favorite local Type magical lane. item shop. And you guys all pour in. You hear the familiar ring of the bell and the very loud, high-pitched greeting of your friend, the Typhling Zendros. As she gives each of you a great hug, introduces herself to you, Father Crow. Hi, I am... Right. They call me Father Crow. Uh Aha. You should lead with that one. Mm. (laughs) My apologies. I like to say my true name first. Do Do you know what a name is? I don't have time yes, for this. What, I just gave you. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing, guys? What can I do for you? Oh, well, we just got back from a long trip. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gouda here lost an arm. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> so, what can I do for you? Uh, I was thinking a new arm, but better than the old one. Better than the <sighs> So, I do a lot of things. Arms are, uh, that's a weird commodity. Oh. I'll look around for you if you like. Okay. Yeah? I'll for you. You got since you're already paying me, which by the way, I procured some items for you. I thought maybe you'd want to take a look if uh if you guys got some time and some money. Um and then yeah, as part of a, our arrangement here, uh, I'll try and I'll wrestle something up for you. Something Thank you. Something nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh yeah, Zendris, let's see what you got. So Zendris uh, informs you all that she got a random cache of stuff for you, this week's uh, finds, if you will. And she runs to the back and rummages out a small chest. Uh, When she brings it out, in it, you find a potion of green substance, which you recognize to be a potion of healing. A bag with some kind of uh, dust inside of it. Uh, the tag on the bag is labeled Dust of Disappearance. You find a uh, magic scroll. What spell is it? Do we know? It's rolled up. Okay. But it's fourth level. You find a potion with a purple-like substance in it, a little bigger than the uh, other one. Um, and it is labeled Potion of Longevity. 54. For Jesus is a j- very big blue potion labeled uh, Potion of Storm Giant Strength. Oh. And finally, okay, so that won't really fit in the chest. Uh, <laughs> a small uh, medallion type necklace labeled Medallion of Thoughts. And then she reaches behind the counter and pulls out a uh, great big javelin. What? <laughs> Labeled the javelin of lightning. <laughs> I was thinking of you when I found this, sweetie. Yeah, that's that's nice. Uh, blue potion though. How much? Blue potion was the potion of storm, giant strength. Giant strength. Fifty thou. Oh. Whoa. Damn. For the just the potion. It's legendary. Damn. damn. Big damn. Oh, man. Um, that makes sense, though. Yeah. Zinfer's going to inquire to his amulet. I'm pretty sure most amulet. of the shit on this list is legendary. Hey, I just random rolled. What's up? Zinfer's going to inquire to the uh, to the amulet. Like, what's it do? What's it do? Medallion? Or the medallion. And how much does it cost? While wearing it, you can expend charges to cast Detect Thoughts. Hmm. Is it as an action you can expend a charge? <laughs> okay. Sounds useful, but not quite what I'm looking for. Actually, how much is it? I've I've got a fun idea. Two fifty. Oh. Oh, that's not bad. Two fifty thousand. No. Two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty. Perfect. Wow. You, you might as well, <laughs> like, you can't not buy it. <laughs> um, when we're sitting on ten k plus. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like um, we might as well get uh, that for the utility. Sandra Starling. Um. Yes, my dear. Uh, let's say. Mm-hmm. That we wanted to get the javelin and the oh, uh, as well you should and the the disappearing dust mm-hmm. and maybe that maybe that scroll I don't know maybe that scroll what kind of package deal could we get going there what kind well, of package deal 
actually, real quick question also, because I'm an idiot. If you have a fourth level scroll, do you have to be able to cast fourth level spells? So you can cast the scroll because it's all right there. Okay. Um, The specification there is a wizard cannot copy it if he does not have access to fourth level spells. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Because it's like you're trying to... Right. You're like, I don't know what the fuck this is. You wanted the javelin. Javelin, scroll, and dust of disappearing. All together, for you, 2000 That's a really good deal. We have the funds. <laughs> we do have the funds. Let's get those three items, definitely. So that's the spell scroll, the health potion, and the javelin? The spell scroll, the dust of disappearing, and, and the, the javelin. javelin. Cool. And you said 2000 Yeah. Cool. We now have 8450 And I'm going to hand the dust of disappearing to Damien Woo! as a little present. This is for next time when you have to break if, someone out of jail. That way I don't have to help. I detect thoughts. <laughs> Thanks. Can I mimic those thoughts? What do you mean? If I as a Kenku cast detect thoughts on somebody, can I mimic the thoughts that I hear? Oh, no. Because I would say you're aware of the thoughts, but it's not like you're listening to the voice in their head. Okay. Your spell scroll mm-hmm. is Dimension Door. Oh, okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! Wait, oh, is this Dimension is Door the nice. one I'm thinking of? It creates a di- extra dimensional. You teleport yourself from your current location to any spot within range, which is 500 feet. Oh. Uh, you arrive at exactly the spot desired. Uh, it can be a place you can see, one you can visualize, or one you can describe by stating distance and direction, such as 200 feet straight downward or upward to the northeast at a 45 degree angle. Could you imagine just shouting those directions and then just taking off? <laughs> Are you sure the mine shaft is exactly 100 feet under us? Yes, I go down 100 feet. <laughs> uh, ends can, up like clipping into the can wall. Can we use that more than once? Or is it just a one-time use? The spell scroll? Yeah, yeah it's a one-time use. Well, you we can, save the dust of disappearance. That means we can all disappear. There's more. Uh, you can bring along objects as long as their weight doesn't exceed what you can carry. You can also bring one willing creature of your size or smaller who is carrying gear up to its carrying capacity. Uh, the creature must be within five feet. If you would arrive in a place already occupied by an object or creature... You and any creature traveling with you take 4d6 tr- force damage and the spell fails to teleport you. <laughs> Wait, but only not all of us can fit into the door. Only two people. Well, at least with disappearance, we can all Darn disappear I, within 10 feet. I thought Dimension Door was the one where it like opens a extra dimensional plane that you can stick someone in. Nope. Because oh, then... You're like perfect dead <laughs> punishment. Lure him to the temple. I'm oh, a- you are cursed, my son. Let me cast Push him under the plane of fire. Just any plane. I don't give a fuck. You bought your gear. Are we doing anything else? Uh, Gouda's going to walk outside the town and meditate in nature for a couple hours and then probably head to the inn to get some food and retire for the night. Okay. Close shopping. Perfect. Zimfer? Um, let's see. There's nothing really I need at the moment. So, uh... Zinfer will follow Gouda and do the same. Meditate and then... Meditate in some nature? Yep. Perfect. Um, So we're into the afternoon at this point when everyone takes off their own way. Lyra, you're doing... Uh, I'm going to go see if my letter has had any response yet. Okay. Go down to the local postal carrier. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. The old Ravenport. (laughs) Yeah. Damien? Stay and talk to Zentra. Maybe she has something else. Keep a secret locked away. Plus, she told me to talk to her after I got that demon baby out of me. <sighs> okay, what are you, what are you trying to do? Mm. First, I'm going to tell her I got the demon baby out of me. <laughs> oh, sweetie. I'm, I'm so happy for you. That just, that seems like a, a really, just a not good situation. No, it wasn't. You know? <laughs> But um, I was wondering, do you have like anything in the back that you don't like show a lot of people that you might, you know, have open to sell maybe? <laughs> Sweetie, I don't hide anything. Everything I have out here is open for sale. Hmm. Anything in the back just isn't ready to be sold yet. Some things got to be fixed. Some things have to be, you know, 
Curse uh, removed. <laughs> Curse yeah. removed, you know. It's not all fun and games. Aw, so you don't have anything special for me, you think? Sweetie, you know all if, uh, the first special thing I find is coming your way. Hmm. Okay, I'll see you later. Call me if you ever need anything. <laughs> you came and called, never mind. <laughs> you get a sending stone. Yeah. <laughs> Give her one of the sending stones and take the other. <laughs> Lyra, what were you doing? I'm going to go see if I got a response from my letter All to right. my priestess. So you priestess. return, you go back to probably your the post temple. Op. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. That's probably where you would receive mail. Uh, you get back and you do a note that you have not received a response yet. Mm-hmm. And when you enter your temple, you, everything is kind of messy. Again? Yeah. God damn it, TikTok. Yeah, TikTok seems to be... He's not going crazy, but he seems to be acting erratic, and he's making very strange decisions, putting things where they don't belong, Um, just going through some weird motions. Uh, TikTok, everything okay, buddy? Uh, You just get the normal series of... uh, clicks some words in response. Um, But he doesn't seem to skip a beat. He just kind of keeps going about his business. Uh, I'm going to just observe for like a few minutes and see if I can maybe spot what's causing this issue. Sure. You just... uh, Give me an investigation. Sure. 17 plus 2... 19. History. History? plus 417. Your investigation into TikTok's uh, um, motions, movements, uh, erratic behavior uh, spans from a few minutes to a few hours as uh, you work your way well into the evening observing TikTok and and the inspiration and the the thought kind of suddenly strikes you that... um, He's a Modron. Modrons are meant for order, and Modrons answer to typically one being. And when they are not serving that being, when they go rogue, they tend to go chaotic. And when they act more chaotic, they are retrieved and... Repaired. Quote-unquote, repaired. Oh, I'm going to lose my little buddy. (laughs) Um, can I, like, try and calm him, maybe? You can try. Ooh, wait! I have a spell for that. I have a spell for that. Does you have calming emotions? I do! <laughs> That's what I thought you had! Yeah. Uh, yeah, calm emotions. Okay. I'm gonna cast calm emotions on him. Uh, I believe it's a wisdom save? Let me check. A charisma saving throw. The DC is 14. He fails. Okay. So... His emotions are suppressed. Uh, so TikTok suddenly goes from uh, frantic to docile. Good, good, good. I'm gonna just kind of go and pick him up and kind of just start <laughs> petting him, stroking him, and he's this clockwork machine of living thing. Uh, Wouldn't he weigh like he has feelings pounds? too? No, I just mean like picking him up. <laughs> Lyra's a beefy lady. Yeah, Lyra is super strong. You know what? You write. <laughs> Zim for Gouda. <laughs> you wander off into the uh, naturey part of Salt Marsh to meditate and hang out and realign your chakra and probably smoke more weed. Let's be real. Um, <sighs> Us now. <laughs> Zimfer, you are uh, out there, just kind of taking in the breeze, feeling the uh, the air around you, the grass underneath you, and you feel the the presence of that seed that you retrieved the other day. Mm-hmm. It's, it, you can feel like a warmth radiating from it. Because pretty much my thinking is I'd have to get in touch with the other furbolg back in my home forest in order to really get any knowledge on that. So uh, I guess really the best I can do is meditate on it and attempt to communicate with the seed itself. Perfect. So you kind of just... Uh, you take it into your lap here, and you're kind of holding it all gently, focusing on all your willpower. Um, 
on it just trying to to connect with whatever whatever this may be or represents Mm -hmm. and uh, a couple hours go by into the evening here um and what you're left with is the inclination to plant it right here right here um and zinfer is getting the idea that that's what the seed wants then he will comply and plant it right there so as you take your big old paw and you just kind <laughs> of shovel, up a, shovel out a big dirt. thing of dirt and plant it in and you just <laughs> kick it over. You say a few words over it, a druidic prayer. Um, and at this point, you and Gouda, what are you guys going to do? Turn it's You're into the evening. Your meditation is probably over. You're turning in. You're partying. you probably going to just turn in turn party in. pretty hard. I'm like, a you guys have had, had a long yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are a little pooped. Perfect. So you all go to turn in. Damien, what were you? You did your thing with Zendros, and then you were... Yeah, walking around. Wandering around town? Yeah. Gonna go to bed. Have a nice, easy day. Turn it in? Yeah. Perfect. We'll I have... cover Father Crow's day. <laughs> um, you spend the day meandering through the shops, trying to find something worthy of your um, your status. Uh to I want multiple backups. <laughs> to your satisfaction, several of the shops that uh, Gellard recommended to you earlier pro- uh, provided several sets of fine wares for you, yeah. including an impeccable red cape to drape yourself in. Does it billow too? It does not billow. Can I get it to billow? <laughs> Wear it over I bet the you billowing. You know cape. someone who can get it to billow. Oh yeah, I do. So several sets. And we're going to ask for 100 gold. And uh, how do you turn in for the night, Father Crow? Um, before I turn in, I would like to meet with Zendris again. Okay. And come in. Now I'm far more clean and extravagant looking. Okay. I'd be like, hello, Miss Zendris. Oh, hello there, sweetheart. I, I think I remember you from earlier, right? Yeah, yeah I'm with the uh, ah, f- the other guys. F- f- Figaro, right? Is that what it... I am Father Crow. Oh, that was close enough. What can I do for you? Uh, yes, as you can see, I am now finally dressed to my station. Um, uh-huh. I have this cape, and I really liked the cape that my friend Damien let me borrow, and that it flew in the wind and i wish to experience that with uh-huh. this new cape can you possibly do something for me tell you what sweetheart you leave it with me a couple days 50 gold we'll see what happens it is all yours all right yay and i very graciously bow and thanks as i hand the the cape over and i return to the inn and i with the, with Zoe's all bundled up very neatly, I hand or Damien's, I hand it back to him and say, "Thank you." Oh, you're welcome. Don't worry about him. You turn your sleep at the end, right? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Lyra, mother. So your afternoon turns into evening as you uh, investigate TikTok. TikTok. Your evening turns into night as you attempt to calm him. Uh, from his frantic state and you pass out um, where you are laying and your sleep is peaceful Uh, and you start to hear a voice booming voice like thunder sure it starts to get louder suddenly you open your eyes you're standing in the middle of the ocean nothing but sea around you gray skies fairly calm and a voice kind of comes down to you from the clouds why do you fight the path that i have chosen for you i i'm not not trying to do you think it's mere accident that you've uh, been handed this position um (laughs) i do not make mistakes child well yeah that's true i just i it's just a little fast is all it just it just happened so quickly you know 
I cannot promise that you will always be prepared for coming trials. But I do promise you, your faith is strong. And if it remains so, your power will be even stronger. Um, okay, okay. Um, well, look, if, 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 if this is what you want, then, then I'll do it. You know me. I have faith in you. And, uh, it's, uh, just then ahead of you, you see a weird glint of light, uh, out further into the sea. The waves start to pick up. It starts to get rough around you. You're still standing on top of the water, but it starts to push you around, knock you over a little bit. Mm -hmm. I hear your words, child, but can you follow through? Can you prove yourself? Uh Uh, I'm going to just start running towards the point. Start making your way yeah. there. Give me some athletics. Sure. Dream athletics. That's really good. 14. Sorry. Um, 16. 16? Yeah. I thought this was going to be harder. <laughs> you, uh, you, you, hear, you hear the call of Procan. The challenge is thrown down. The gauntlet lays before you. You start running. The f- closer you get, the harder it is. The waves start to pick up harder, faster. They crash down on top of you, knocking you back into the water. You're drenched. It's cold. Lightning is crashing down around your feet. It has not managed to hit you yet. You dodge. You weave. You break your way through the waves. You're getting closer and closer. And as you uh, get to arrive to your destination, you find a pedestal, a small, uh, small circle of calm sea around it. And on top of the pedestal is a hammer. It's a sleek hammer, all one piece, pure steel. And on the side of it, the symbol of Procan. Nice. Uh, I'm going to grab the hammer. You touch the hammer, and the sea around of you instantly dies, and the clouds break away. And as you lift the hammer from the pedestal, a final strike of lightning, the width of the circle you're standing in, comes down upon you, and you wake up, hammer in hand, electricity charging around your fist, TikTok nowhere to be found. Oh. Everyone take level five, and that's where we're going to stop it. Hey, everybody. This is Josh just popping in here at the end of the episode to let you know to go to our website, oneuppodcast.com. There you'll find our cast members page where you can learn all about our cast members of Are We Dead Yet? Or you can check out my short stories that I've been writing throughout the year. Go to oneuppodcast.com, click on short stories, and you'll find those there. We're going to be bringing you a lot of great content throughout 2020, so be sure to stay tuned. And make sure to leave us a review on iTunes. That really helps the show out, lets people know that people are excited about what we're making, and it'll help us uh, gauge the interest of the audience for more stuff in the future. So go to iTunes, look up Are We Dead Yet, and leave us a review. And we'll see you in two weeks with another episode of the show. Bye.